<clears throat> so shall we start? Mm. So dear colleagues, dear friends, uh, today uh, we are starting the uh, webinar series of May. Uh, so pretty much May, we are going to hold like four seminars, uh, but two of them uh, will be like in English and uh, we invited internationally uh, well-known colleagues and uh, we are going to uh, as per perform these webinars, uh, these two webinars uh, followingly. And uh, today's webinar, we invited uh, Dr. Sabo our dear friend and our colleagues uh, from Hungary. Uh, in a while, I'm going to read his CV uh, and then we, we, we can proceed uh, with his uh, webinar. So first of all, I would like to welcome uh, Bente uh, to our webinar series. Uh, it's a short introduction to his CV. So, Bente Tamash Sabo is an assistant professor at the Department of Oral Diagnostics at Samarvels University, Budapest, Hungary. His research interests lie primarily on dental maxillofacial radiology and computer science technology, which he published studies actively uh, related to common tomography imaging. Uh, his actual age index seven. So uh, he was the member of the research and scientific committee between 2016 and uh, 2020. And he's currently the member of junior uh, committee of the European Academy of Dental Maxillofacial Radiology. He is also serving as the secretary of the Hungarian Society of Dental Maxillofacial Radiology from 2020. And uh, he organized a fascinating meeting, the fifth uh, European Academy of Dental Maxillofacial Radiology junior meeting in Budapest. And hopefully, uh, we are looking forward to hosting us again. <laughs> Thank you very much, Khan. Uh, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Khan, for the introduction. Um, and first of all, I would like to thank you very much for uh, letting me to uh, uh, have a webinar um, uh, this time. Um, and I do welcome uh, uh, the colleagues and in the following, uh, I'd like to um, share my screen first. Uh, in the meantime, please feel free to type your questions in the chat, chat box so we can ask to Bante later on uh, after the lectures. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, is my slide visible? Yes, we can uh, see your slides. Uh, okay. Can you go forward a little bit so we can able yes. to see if it's just adjusting the slides or not? Is it moving? No. <laughs> it's not. So maybe a new share I need. Maybe a share of, uh, let's say, screen. Is it better now? Yes. No, it's oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, so uh, in the following, um, I would like to talk about the basic principles of CBCT and uh, understanding the uh, effects of artifacts on the reconstructed images. I would like to share my experiences uh, from everyday life, and um, I would like to emphasize how important it is to understand uh, what are uh, visible uh, on a reconstructed image and what is the background and how we can modify and adjust uh, the parameters on a CBCT device. First of all, as a historical aspect, um, we have to remember that uh, in 1995, Pierluigi Mozzo and Atelier Tacconi physicians constructed the prototype of Newton DVT 9000 CBCD, let's say the uh, first um, um, uh, CBCT device for dental radiology in the market, which uh, uh, was it later. Uh, the best available box size was 300 uh, micrometer. Uh, as you can see here, um, um, I'm trying to fetch the uh, spotlight. Actually here, it was constructed uh, as a supine position for the patient. Um, nowadays, there's a lot of 
other uh, possibilities, of course. Um, um, first of all, I would like to emphasize uh, the difference between a CBCT and a medical CD, let it be a, a multi-detector or multi-slice um, CT, because it's really important to understand that both modalities are actually computer tomography, but the background is really different. Um, of course, in both cases, there are patients. Of course, they will, uh, it, uh, he or she will be imaged. But uh, the first difference is that in case of uh, MDCT, uh, the patient on, uh, on the patient table moves uh, during the acquisition. Though in case of uh, the CBCD acquisition, the patient must stand still during the whole procedure. Of course, in both cases, uh, there are X-ray sources. And here we just arrived uh, at the second difference uh, of uh, the uh, between the CBCD and the MDCT. Here, um, as you can see, uh, in case of CBCD, uh, it uh, operates with a flat panel detector. But in case of the MDCT, the uh, uh, detector elements are placed uh, on a curve. Okay, so uh, we can say that it is uh, another uh, big difference. The third uh, big difference is the shape of the X-ray beams. In case of the uh, CBCT, a cone beam uh, shape is going to reach the patient after the detector. In case of MDCT, the source is more like uh, a fan beam, or uh, of course, in case of uh, 64 slice um, uh, uh, MDCTs, um, the, 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 the beam is a bit different. It, uh, it's a bit opened. So, uh, we can say that maybe it's approaching the uh, cone beam or not. Uh, actually, what we can uh, find out is that both modalities affecting each other. But now, uh, to this day, it's, it's, uh, it has its uh, differences. And of course, in both cases, the source and the detector rotates around the patient, patient's head. Uh, uh, in case of CBCT, just once, but in case of uh, uh, this MDCT, it rotates con constantly. And meanwhile, the patient table is moving. Next step after the acquisition is the image reconstruction, how it is carried out uh, in case of CBCD. Here we have the X-ray source. Let it be this, um, the uh, volume that will be imaged. And I'm showing here the detector and these squares would uh, be a schematic uh, image of uh, one uh, uh, detector element. The first step is that we are going to select uh, the field of view, the volume that we need to uh, image. And then after the X-ray beams uh, just passing through the object um, and reaching the, det the, the, det the detector, sorry. Okay, let's just, let's just check only one X-ray. It leaves the X-ray source, go through the object and reaches a detector element. What happens after? Thanks to an algorithm, a reconstructed volume will be calculated, but how? Actually from uh, the detector element, uh, the intensity volume, attenuated intensity volume be, will be calculated back to this reconstructed volume, which is, uh, which consists of an amount of voxels. Okay, so actually for, from the detector elements, uh, the, uh, into the voxel, a gray value will be provided. That is what we call voxel in the reconstructed volume. Um, the image reconstruction is based on uh, the filtered back projection in case of CBCT, which is um, more or less uh, 
um, based on the Falcom Davis Cress algorithm, uh, if it's used. Um, it was published uh, the very first uh, in 1980s, um, and there were some prerequisites. And it was uh, written that for the best reconstruction, the following prerequisites shall be uh, present. The first one, the beam must be monochromatic. That might be an issue actually, because uh, we cannot say that uh, all of the CBCD, in case of all of the CBCD devices, uh, uh, monochromatic uh, X-rays are just uh, leaving the X-ray source, but polychromatic. The second uh, uh, prerequisite was scattered photons should not just primary photons can contribute in forming the projection images. Um, we already know, uh, uh, of course, that but there are some scattering artifacts uh, on CBCTs. And according to the acquisition technique, uh, we expect scattered photons. Uh, so that is why um, it won't be present I mean, this point totally. The third prerequisite is the volume does not move during the acquisition. Actually, mostly it can be carried out if uh, we uh, reach the proper uh, uh, fixation of the patient in the unit. The fourth one is that no part of the imaged volume hang out of the field of view. In case of large field of view, uh, for instance, when the, uh, the skull uh, shall be imaged uh, totally. In this case, it can uh, cause an issue. But what if we are just, we are focusing uh, on a smaller uh, volume, like in case of endodontics. In this case, of course, the field of view will be inside uh, the anatomical uh, uh, areas. So in this case, uh, it won't be fulfilled. And the fifth prerequisite is infinite number of projections are available. Actually, we have just a limited number of uh, projections from which uh, the uh, filter break projection uh, um, algorithm is going to calculate the proper gray values. So regarding all of these as a starting point, we expect that we have to just adjust and refine some parameters to gain the best uh, image quality. Um, I'm, in the following, I would like to um, share uh, uh, the most uh, important values which can be uh, used as a influencing factor uh, for the quality of the reconstructed images. Let's just start with the selected field of view and the voxel size. Um, the so-called nominal uh, or technical voxel size, which can be adjusted prior to the exposure, has a significant effect on the spatial resolution and thus on the image quality. The smaller the size of the selected voxel, the better resolution image material we can gain. Um, for currently available high resolution CBCD, the voxel size can be selected from 100 micrometer or even 75 micrometer for uh, smaller structures. At the same time, reducing the size of the voxel reduces the size of the volume which can be imaged. Namely, only a smaller field of view can be set on the device due to the computational limitations of the algorithm which is used. And the amount of noise detected in the image will be, in this case, higher. Okay, um, So if we are just uh, reducing the size of the voxel, we won't be able to, to image too big uh, field of view, uh, so big volumes. The size of the voxel is mostly the same in all directions of space. So in case of CBCDs, we can say that it's isotropic. However, it is important to emphasize that the previously set nominal voxel size is unequal to the spatial uh, resolution of the particular imaging device. Um, I'd like to share uh, with you uh, um, an interesting uh, uh, categorization of the field of views 
uh, which was published by Ludlow in uh, their uh, meta-analysis. Um, we already just use um, um, in everyday life, small field of view I need, medium field of view, or large field of view with the centimeters, but what are the, the borders and how can, above which volume we can say that it's a small or it's a medium? That is why Lula um, used in their um, meta-analysis that small field of view means that any height of the volume is smaller than 10 centimeter. The medium field of view uh, was uh, published as a range of volume heights from 10 to 15 centimeter. And they define large field of view as that the volume heights are larger than 15 centimeter. It can be a good uh, um, classification system if, if you are uh, um, trying to uh, describe um, how big uh, volume would you like to use. But what if the unit or the CBCT unit lets you to, I hope uh, you're going to see this, uh, lets you to just adjust the field of view individually to the uh, uh, required uh, uh, anatomical uh, area. In this case, um, of course, you are going to be able to reduce uh, the patient dose as well. The next uh, influencing factor I'd like to share with you is the spatial resolution. What does it mean? Uh, it is called to specify the size of the smallest structure that can still be separated from an adjacent uh, formula. Uh, spatial resolution <clears throat> can be measured objectively uh, by, the, uh, by calculating the modulation transfer fun uh, function. Um, I'm just showing an image uh, from one of uh, our study. Uh, we've measured the uh, MTF curve. And actually um, here, it, it's an objectively uh, measurable uh, parameter. Uh, and it's usually um, uh, a bit bigger than the uh, uh, nominal voxel size. So if you're selecting uh, uh, 100 micrometer, then it's uh, the spatial resolution you, you can expect with uh, higher uh, or bigger uh, voxel volume, me, uh, or bigger, bigger size, sorry, bigger sizes, uh, meaning that the structures uh, can be uh, distinguished from each other are, uh, are bigger than uh, 100 micrometer. The level of noise. Um, when we are talking about level of noise, we'd like to um, uh, um, estimate the homogeneity of gray values on the reconstructed images. It can be reduced by uh, using a larger voxel size, but this leads to a reduction in spatial resolution, namely the noise and the spatial resolution are inversely proportional. One of the uh, disadvantages of CBCT modality is the proportionally higher noise level, noise level uh, on the reconstructed images compared to uh, an MDCT. Contrast resolution, what does contrast mean? Uh, meaning that what is the smallest difference in signal level in a given image that we can still distinguish from each other. This value can be given by the contrast to noise ratio CNR value, which can be measured as well objectively. Uh, I'm showing you some results and figure from uh, the study of uh, uh, Ron Kainan. Uh, here uh, on the right side, first, I would like to show you that they used um, uh, paranasal sinus imaging, phant uh, uh, imaging phantoms for paranasal um, uh, imaging. And here you can see how uh, it was used, I mean, like how it was imaged in case of a uh, multi slice CT and in case of uh, uh, dental CBCT with a default protocol and here with an ultra low dose protocol. Actually, you can see the difference. Uh, between uh, the ultra low dose uh, and the default protocol, and as well as somehow the MSCTs, uh, 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 I mean, on an MSCT image, it is more distinguishable. 
Here are the numeric results. Uh, they found that uh, in case of MDCT, the CNR volume was much more higher. Uh, in case of the default settings, in case of uh, ultra low dose mode, it was higher for the MDCT either. So what we can say is that, that the uh, uh, MSCTs uh, have still uh, better uh, CNR volumes contrast resolution. Size of this fo focal spot, I would like to just uh, mention it. Um, uh, if we just reduce the size of the focal spot, we can gain uh, sharper and sharper images. But there's a um, there's a limitation because if it's uh, decreased to, I mean, the size is decreased too much, uh, there's a danger of overheat. So that is why uh, CBCDs mostly use uh, 0 0.5 millimeter sized focal spot. Uh, the other um, uh, uh, influencing factor is the distance of X-ray source object and the sensor. This is another factor, which is a factory of settings on which we cannot uh, modify, but it's really important to know. And uh, the manufacturers has to, have to uh, focus uh, on uh, this factor as well to uh, uh, gain the best image quality. Tube voltage, tube current uh, exposure time product, that is, a factor which can be uh, influenced in everyday practice. Um, here I uh, took photographs of our uh, uh, operation panel of uh, CBCT and actually it is valid for, of course, for uh, the CBCTs, uh, a lot of CBCTs that uh, you can just set uh, and adjust uh, the peak voltage and as well as you can uh, adjust the uh, tube current exposure time product as well. Um, nowadays, uh, it's getting uh, uh, bigger and bigger attention, in a bigger and bigger uh, attention, uh, that to provide somehow um, uh, an estimated report uh, of the dose or, 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 or just a dose parameter. In this case, um, in some uh, uh, CBCD devices, you can read out that for the given settings, there's an estimated factorial value for, in this case, those area product, DAP value. In this, with this setting, you're going to uh, gain uh, 845 milligray centimeter. Um, don't forget that if it's possible, uh, and if your unit or, or your device um, has an option, um, you might use it and you might think about uh, the use of it, uh, namely the ULD or LD modes, uh, the ultra low dose or uh, low dose modes. If you press the button, uh, let's see what, what has changed. Actually, not the uh, uh, kilo voltage, but the uh, tube current uh, exposure time product is changed from 63 till 16. And look at that, the dose area product actually four times smaller than, the, than in uh, the previous case, of course. Uh, there are some disadvantages uh, regarding the image quality of uh, the ULD reconstructed uh, images, but you have to consider uh, uh, the, the, uh, how high contrast resolution and spatial resolution you need and, uh, and what is your diagnostical question. And if you're expecting that with a lower dose, it can be answered, in this case, uh, you have to justify and to optimize uh, and go for the ULD. Um, the next uh, uh, influencing factor I'd like to share it with you, the rotation arc of X-ray source uh, and the detector. Uh, some CBCT uh, devices uh, let you to, uh, to, to select the uh, rotation arc 
uh, from uh, 180 degree till 360 degree. Uh, when half a turn or less than 360 degree is set, although the amount of noise detected on the reconstructed image increases in this case, due to the fact here uh, that reconstruction is based on fewer, ray, uh, fewer row images, by reducing the exposure time reduces the patient's chance of wounding and as well as decreases the patient dose. So if you reduce the rotation steps, you're going to re reduce the projection uh, images, the row images, and hence you're going to reduce the exposure time. The patient will not move, of course, uh, I mean the, the, the possibility of the movement of the patient, and of course it decreases uh, the patient dose. And finally, uh, I would like to uh, get deeper into uh, the artifacts which are uh, visible, which can be visible on CBCT reconstructed images. What do we call artifact? Artifact is any lesion that is not physically present in the real structure of the image, but it is detectable on the reconstructed image. Namely, there is a difference between the calculated and the actual attenuation of X-ray intensity. Um, I'd like to share it with you uh, regarding uh, uh, Professor Schurz's uh, classification system. Um, there are a lot of uh, available uh, um, classification system for artifacts. Um, it is really uh, practical uh, in the everyday use. Uh, we can talk about three big uh, classes. First, the artifacts caused by the physical properties of the X-ray, um, the beam hardening, the scatter, and the extinction artifact. Patient-related artifacts, I'd like to share uh, the motion artifact uh, with you. Artifacts caused by the properties of CBCT device, ring artifact, aliasing uh, uh, artifact, and partial volume effect. Let's start with the beam hardening. Here, the essence is that the X-rays are leaving the X-ray tube are poly chromatic, as I previously uh, mentioned. And the lower energies are absorbed through the tissues with higher radiation absorption capacity. Therefore, the energy of the rays reaching the detector will be proportionally higher than the energy leaving the X-ray source, and this intensity value will be recorded. What do we see on, an, uh, on a reconstructed image? Alternating dark bands and streaks may appear. Um, as a subcategory in the literature, we can find the cupping uh, artifact. Um, and it is a, a special case. Um, if a homogeneous cylindrical uh, structure is imaged, the energy of the X-rays passing through the center of the volume will harden to a greater extent than at the periphery of the object. So transparency appear in the middle area of the scanned object, which decreases continuously towards the periphery of the cylindrical structure I'm showing. Here, um, <clears throat> the uh, X-ray beam is coming from this, uh, this way, and this is the uh, object which is going to be imaged uh, in an uh, actual view. Uh, and this is the sensor. So the energy of the X-rays passing through the center of the cylindrical volume increases relatively with respect to the periphery of the object. Okay, so when the here you can see that the uh, this uh, dot dash blue line indicates the recorded energy, which is uh, uh, a bit higher than it is expected, uh, and here. Underneath, here, this is the expected uh, energy level uh, of uh, the X-ray that are reaching the sensor. So that may cause a difference. And here you can see that the two uh, energy levels are uh, approaching each other to the periphery. With another uh, image sample I'd like to show you, this is a, a, 
an art, article from uh, Usui. Um, here, uh, what they did is that they used uh, uh, phantoms. And on the left side, um, they, okay, they imaged uh, the phantom, but for the reconstruction image, they used only the primary photons, not the scattered ones. What they got is that when you look on the position here from somewhere, yeah, somewhere from here, uh, more or less uh, the relative uh, pixel value is quite linear. Okay, there is a fluctuation here, but it's quite linear. In case of B, they use scattered photons as well for the reconstruction, which is actually demonstrating uh, the real life circumstances. And what they got is that when we are approaching the center, the pixel value going to be decreased, okay? Causing higher transparency on the reconstructed image. Um, to the best of my knowledge, that is why, uh, I mean, accordingly, this graph is called the cupping effect. I'd like to show you some samples. Um, here you can see an actual image of a, a, a lower a root canal field uh, molar. And here there's uh, uh, arrowheads are pointing on the bright streaks and uh, uh, the arrow uh, is pointing on the uh, transparency. Okay, uh, usually you can spot uh, this type of artifact next to um, uh, uh, root canal filling materials, for instance. And sometimes on this uh, more or less sagittal uh, view, you can just follow here in the middle, the transparent area, which can be looked like actually uh, as a fracture line, but it's just, it's not, it's just an artifact. So it might cause uh, 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 misdiagnosis if uh, there is a misinterpretation on the re uh, reconstructed image. So that is why it's really important to know that these uh, transparent uh, areas uh, and this transparent line is an artifact, not a pathology. Um, another case, uh, um, here you can see on the coronal uh, plane, the same situation that next to the uh, root canal filling, a transparent line uh, depicted, okay? And this is uh, the artifact once again, and here it is another uh, beam hardening, uh, or in this case, if, you're, if we are thinking about uh, the root canal feeling as a cylindrical form, you can use the word in cupping artifact. And finally, this case, in case of a premolar, more or less, you will meet uh, a lot of cases, uh, the uh, beam hardening uh, artifact. Scatter. Um, due to the interaction between the X-ray and the material of the scanned object, uh, you uh, are going to uh, observe uh, the result of scatter. The direction of some X-ray photons uh, changes after the interaction with the material, and thus the intensity in this case is recorded on a more distant detector element compared to its expected arrival on the assumed element of the detector. However, the value of the altered X-ray photon intensity will be added to the value of the primary intensity of the X-ray photon reaching the detector element in the original direction. So the FDK algorithm will determine an overestimated grayscale value on the uh, altered uh, uh, detector uh, element. Um, all this reduces the contrast resolution as well and distorts the grayscale values. Um, but the scatter can be reduced by increasing the exposure energy and decreasing the field of view. I'd like to show you and present to you um, uh, on an animation. 
Here is the X-ray source, the volume to be imaged, and this is the detector. Uh, let's check uh, first uh, the, uh, an X-ray, which just uh, runs uh, on a path uh, which is expected. It goes through the material, no interaction, and reaches the detector element. Okay, that's the first step. But what if uh, there's an interaction between the material and most of the cases there will be? Um, in this case, there's an altered direction of the uh, X-ray beam after the interaction with the material and will be, um, uh, the intensity uh, will be recorded on this detector element and not on this one. So that is why the uh, intensity value will be uh, added to this one and smaller uh, uh, intensity value will be registered uh, in the expected uh, element. Here I'm showing, um, I hope uh, on your monitor uh, uh, it's visible, uh, some uh, scatter results, uh, typically bright or dark streaks and uh, areas actually similar to beam hardening. And here in the frontal sinus, you see some uh, other uh, brighter gray values. And for instance, here or here, even uh, uh, brighter and darker uh, areas as well. So this, in this case, if, the, uh, if you're using a um, uh, bigger field of view or large field of views, in this case, you're increasing uh, the possibility uh, for scatter uh, artifacts. Um, let's see the extinction artifact. If a high density material, for instance, metal, uh, or for instance, as we saw uh, before, uh, uh, root canal filling material, enters the X-ray path in which it is completely absorbed, the given element of the detector records only a very small signal intensity. Okay, uh, resulted uh, uh, the extinction uh, artifact will appear as dark, blank areas or radial streaks on the reconstructed image, which can significantly impair the analysis of the image, even on more distant slices. Um, the dark blank areas, uh, I'd like to emphasize, which are derived um, uh, 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 actually as a calculation error in the algorithm. So the, in case of extinction artifact, uh, it is not dark why uh, a lot of uh, X-ray energy reached that uh, elementary and calculated back, but there are missing values. So the algorithm calculates uh, faulty uh, val uh, gray values on that given uh, area. That is why uh, it's dark. The extent of uh, this increases if there are several uh, adjacent uh, substances with higher radiation absorption uh, can be found. Showing an example, here you can see multiple implants uh, in the uh, maxillary jaw. And if they are uh, adjacent to each other, uh, these bold arrows are pointing on the extinction artifact, or we can call missing value artifact, and the narrow uh, arrows are pointing on, pointing at uh, the beam hardening uh, artifacts, the bright uh, or dark uh, streaks, uh, streaks and uh, bands. The patient-related artifact. Uh, I'd like to emphasize here the motion artifact, which is really uh, important uh, to know uh, when you are using a uh, CBCT device. Um, the position of uh, the patient during the image acquisition has a really significant influence on the quality of the reconstructed image. The reconstruction algorithm assumes a displacement free, constant geometry, Hence, in case of movement of the patient, the image acquisition less to afford reconstruction. Um, one of the most common artifacts of CBCT units uh, is the motion artifact, as the phenomenon is related to the length of scanning time. It takes 10, 12 seconds, and uh, during uh, the acquisition time, the patient has to stand still. 
But in contrast uh, uh, to the scan time of one second or less per slice of MDCT device, says in the case of CBCT, the patient must remain in position for more than 10 seconds. Okay, so for MDCT, it rotates uh, uh, really fast. And after that, the area uh, is imaged, the patient will move uh, forward. Um, uh, according to uh, 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 Spinato, uh, uh, Ruben Spinato's uh, uh, findings, um, there is a really interesting um, uh, conclusion. It has that uh, motion artifact may appear more frequently in case of patients under the age of uh, 15 or when using small field of view. And, the, and the, according to another study, the patient's displacement during exposure of more than three millimeter already causes significant deterior, uh, deterioration uh, in the image quality. So it is essential that the exposure is performed, uh, which is performed by an experienced operator, that the patient is properly informed of the course of the examination. The patient must know what is going to be uh, uh, around him or her during the exposure. And that the patient's position is properly fixed by head support available on the device. There are a lot of uh, uh, type of uh, headrest or even um, I'm showing a case for occipital uh, support, uh, but it's uh, essential to uh, fix the patient prior to the acquisition to uh, avoid uh, motion artifacts on reconstructed images. However, uh, we have to notice that the resonance of the CBCD components may play a role in the formation of the motion artifact as well. So it is really recommended to calibrate the device at specific intervals. I'm showing now an example for motion artifact. Here, uh, the uh, I mean motion artifact, uh, how uh, can you re uh, recognize it? You're going to find double contour uh, or a really blurred image a uh, 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 really blurred area uh, on the reconstructed image. Um, when you just spot that there seems to be something wrong here in this case uh, on the coronal plane, uh, you have a, uh, uh, um, a feeling that maybe something is not okay. It looks as if more um, uh, or, or multiple uh, 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 images uh, are superimposed on each other. Um, actually, in case of uh, the sagittal view in the front region, uh, it's a really uh, uh, practical area uh, to, uh, to prove that the patient is really uh, uh, moved during the uh, acquisition. Uh, and it has a really nice uh, double, I mean, like not nice, but a nicely visible uh, double contour. Um, sometimes motion artifact uh, won't appear um, uh, that much like uh, in uh, on the prior images, but you have to focus uh, if a double contour. Uh, uh, and all uh, altogether, the uh, reconstructed images uh, look a bit blurry. Uh, um, in this case, uh, you can expect that uh, the patient uh, uh, moved during the acquisition. Um, the CBCT uh, properties related artifacts I'd like to share. Uh, here first, uh, the ring artifact I'm showing. Um, what we find uh, is concentric dark circles, okay, and uh, next to each other are visible, and mostly it can be um, uh, it can be recognized on the actual uh, reconstructed images, indicating a lack of detector calibration. So you have to uh, uh, consider uh, the calibration of uh, of your device. I would like to show you uh, a not so intensive uh, example as well, but I hope you see as well, but here on the actual slice, 
we can see concentric uh, dark circles on the reconstructed images. Um, uh, next, I'd like to um, share the aliasing uh, artifacts with you, which is um, usually uh, won't uh, disturb uh, uh, the interpretation, but of course it, it uh, might cause, uh, if it's a, a more uh, intensely visible on the reconstructed image. Um, it is caused by uh, uh, the lower sampling frequency and the extent of which is determined by the physical properties of the detector. For instance, the size, the location or detector elements. Uh, the other um, the reason is that due to the geometry of the scattering X-rays here, leaving the source, because in the upper and lower periphery parts of the image volume, the number of recorded X-rays per detector element is smaller than for the elements in the middle uh, of the volume. It's called combi effect uh, uh, as well. And here, um, on the reconstructed image, what we see is that uh, sometimes radially, sometimes uh, around uh, the, the, the margin of, uh, uh, of the reconstructed image um, as stripes uh, further from the center uh, of the image, uh, of the reconstructed image. So here you can see these uh, dark uh, stripes uh, on the, on the uh, edge of the reconstructed image. Uh, it can be mostly compensated uh, by increasing the number of projections and by the built-in uh, uh, image enhancement algorithms if they are available. Um, the last artifact uh, I would like to share uh, with you is the partial volume effect. And uh, to say the truth, usually um, it's, it's not a visible, uh, artifact, but um, it helps you in thinking and assessing uh, the uh, reconstructed image. Um, if there is a large density difference at the edge of the object to be imaged, for instance, between the dentin or, uh, and the root canal, and this is located at the area of the border of two voxels, that in the voxel in which the density of object boundary falls, the reconstruction algorithm determines only an average grayscale value related to the entire voxel. And the algorithm does not calculate with the actual density of the object located on the boundary, but with a lower than that. So a lower grayscale value appears in the periphery of voxel on the reconstructed image, which leads to an overestimation of the volume, which, is, which can be useful and may play a role, uh, according to uh, one of our study, in the uh, visualization of the epical section of the root canal. I'm showing it uh, with uh, images. Um, here, let's just imagine that we'd like to image three times five voxel-sized object in this case, a rectangle. Uh, this rectangle is placed um, exactly, and the edge of the uh, object is exactly at the boundary of two adjacent uh, voxels. When the acquisition uh, is done, after that, the reconstruction algorithm going to uh, uh, calculate gray values to the given voxels. And we are going to have the three times five uh, 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 object depicted uh, with the proper gray values. That's okay. But what if the object is not in the border, uh, uh, on the border of two neighboring uh, uh, voxels. In this case, what we have, we have the same size. I draw, uh, drawn the same uh, object here. What we get is from the three times five rectangle, uh, four times 
five rectangle uh, uh, on the reconstructed image. What happened? Here in this case, just a small part of the object uh, is in uh, the expected uh, voxel area. So the algorithm calculates an average gray value. Okay, so it's at this gray value added to the uh, to the nothing actually. So that is why we are going to have a, uh, uh, a brighter gray value, a brighter uh, gray shade, uh, which is which fulfills the whole voxel area. On the other boundary, what we have is that, yes, the gray value shall be like this, but it is going to be averaged. So in this case, uh, as well, the, uh, uh, the level of gray value will be decreased a bit, okay? So that is why sometimes uh, the partial volume effect may help uh, us to localize uh, uh, structures which uh, dimensions are comparable with the uh, size of the voxel. I'd like to show you um, a really practical um, um, table uh, I borrowed uh, from uh, 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 Ruben Powell's, uh, uh, one of uh, his, from one of his uh, 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 publication. It's a really um, nice overview. How can you um, influence and modify just next to the uh, CB or CBCT device uh, the previously mentioned uh, parameters such as sp spatial resolution, the contrast, the noise, uh, or even the artifacts? Uh, by increasing uh, the size of field of view, uh, it has a, uh, it can have a direct effect on uh, uh, the uh, reduction of the contrast. Uh, the noise is going to be uh, uh, increased and as well as uh, the uh, artifact. Um, in case of radiation, those uh, uh, we can expect, of course, uh, when the uh, field of view, uh, the Kilo voltage and the tube current uh, uh, exposure time uh, product increases, we are going to uh, uh, increase the patient dose as well. Um, by increasing the kilovolt and the uh, milliampere sec uh, values, uh, we can re uh, we are going to reduce the contrast, the noise. Uh, and as uh, yeah, in both cases, um, the spatial resolution uh, are unmarked here actually, because um, we have to emphasize that uh, spatial resolution uh, is strongly uh, based uh, on the selected nominal or technical uh, voxel size which you select prior uh, to the acquisition. Um, when you're increasing uh, the uh, voxel size, in this case, uh, inversely, uh, the uh, you can expect a, a decrease um, in uh, spatial uh, resolution. Though, by um, increasing the voxel size, you are going to uh, be able to uh, reduce the noise. Uh, in the end, I'd like to uh, share some thoughts uh, regarding the present and the future aspects. What we have already, there's um, uh, kind of a lot of uh, amount and types of built-in artifact reduction. Uh, let it be uh, 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 installed in the, uh, in, the, in the viewer software, let it be uh, installed and you can select just prior to the uh, uh, acquisition. So there are a lot of uh, possibilities with the built-in artifact reductions. Um, 
but we still hope and believe that uh, with uh, better computational background, the iterative uh, reconstruction algorithms uh, going to uh, spread, uh, uh, resulting in uh, a better image quality. Um, and finally, uh, there are a couple of uh, uh, investigations and developments uh, regarding uh, uh, the dual energy uh, CBCT. Um, so actually, um, th these are, uh, let's say, if I may say, uh, in a research state, and they are trying to reach and try to learn from uh, what I've mentioned in, uh, uh, in the beginning of um, this lecture, that uh, they're trying to learn uh, possibilities uh, from uh, uh, the medical CD appliances. In this case, uh, for instance, uh, the uh, try they are uh, Lee uh, and co-workers try to uh, uh, invent a new technology. Uh, of course, uh, there are a lot of other uh, researchers who are just uh, taking part in such uh, studies that somehow to uh, uh, gain that uh, two types uh, of energy levels uh, are generated in this case with um, uh, with uh, two focal spots uh, uh, with a higher energy level and with a lower energy level. And with this, maybe uh, in the future, uh, the high density materials, I mean, the uh, uh, artifacts just next to the uh, high density materials can be reduced somehow uh, by not uh, thanks to the software applications, but thanks to the hardware. We will see, but notably, actually, uh, to this day, to the best of my knowledge, um, uh, only just uh, uh, dual uh, energy CBCD uh, uh, operates with operating with um, really high uh, patient dose. So that is why uh, somehow it shall be reduced. Uh, in the future, and we do hope uh, that a novel technique uh, will be uh, invented. I hope I was able to share and to uh, uh, emphasize some aspects from uh, everyday life, uh, uh, everyday CBCT life, and when uh, you are operating uh, with the CBCTs or uh, the uh, assessing the CBCT uh, reconstructed images, uh, and I may hope uh, that uh, the interpretation of the artifacts will help you uh, during the uh, assessment of the CBCT images. And I do hope we are going to meet uh, on the fourth International Congress of Oral Diagnosis and Maxillofacial Radiology Society in Selchuk. Um, and I wish you a pleasant uh, evening and thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you very much, Bente. That was a really nice presentation and also that was a really nice informative presentation. Uh, actually, I mean, uh, we have PhD students, we have specialty students here and it's a very good definition, especially in terms of the artifacts. So they could able to un uh, understand the uh, CBCT generated artifacts. So that's why I would like to thank to you. Uh, let me check the chat box if we have any kind of uh, like questions. So far there are like thank you messages to you and uh, we are very happy and also uh, we will be very looking forward to your uh, presentation in our international uh, maxillofacial uh, radiology congress, which is going to be held in October. So uh, in parallel to this, actually, let me ask you this, because you are going to uh, present in our congress in October about the paranasal sinus imaging. So we were just talking about the maxillofacial area, but how about the CBCT artifacts? Uh, do you have any experience, especially in the large field of view, while you are doing like paranasal sinus imaging? Um, actually, actually, the scatter uh, may uh, di disturb uh, the, uh, the 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 assessment, um, and 
of course, um, if you're, I mean, uh, as I mentioned, the, uh, uh, the artifact removal uh, uh, um, features that may, um, uh, sorry, um, um, uh, softwares or even uh, prior to the CBCT scan, uh, you might uh, select uh, the, uh, we have the comb, the motion artifact reduction, um, uh, artifact removal system. In, in this case, uh, it helps, it helps a lot uh, regarding uh, uh, the motion artifact. Though uh, in this, um, I'd like to emphasize another thing as well, that uh, of course, in, in case of a large field of views, uh, the motion artifact is uh, 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 not that prominent, like in case of endodontic uh, 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 requests, um, because in this case, the smaller the field of view, in this case, actually, uh, it's more prominent, but sometimes um, I'm experiencing then in, in case of large field of views, maybe the patient cannot uh, uh, stand still and move a bit, but with the uh, emotional artifact removal, uh, it helps a lot reducing this. Uh, we have another question. So the question is, uh, do you think in near future, uh, will there be a CBCT machine mm -hmm. uh, that can operate on host fund unit or any kind of stable unit system? Uh, um, as far as I read, um, more and more publications are coming out with uh, uh, how to how to gain or how to derive Hounsfield unit values from CBCT images. Um, I'd like to emphasize that uh, uh, calculating Hounsfield units in case of CBCT images, uh, um, there's always a need for a proper calibration prior uh, to the acquisition with the proper uh, for instance, hydroxyapatite uh, phantoms. If it's not carried out, I'm unsure uh, whether uh, it's a reliable uh, value or not. There are some uh, uh, comparisons and um, uh, they're trying to approach the real uh, value, but actually the background of the imaging technique is different. So that is why I'm not I'm not uh, expecting it uh, uh, in the near future at least. <laughs> in the near future, yes. uh, we have another question. Uh, the question is uh, with dual source CBCT, uh, will it be possible to image the soft tissues better than the CBCT devices we are using currently? And sorry, I didn't catch the the first part of the question. Uh, with the dual source CBCTs, will it be possible to image mm -hmm. the soft tissues better than CBCT devices we are using currently? Um, actually, um, um, I've just assessed some of uh, uh, some uh, examination. I mean, reconstructed images, which was uh, taken by uh, really state of the art uh, uh, CBCT devices. And it seems that the, 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 the contrast resolution, it's somehow it's getting um, uh, promising. I wouldn't say that for distinguishing uh, soft tissues, it can be uh, used, but, but it, it's getting better and better. But uh, according uh, uh, to the study, what I presented, um, to this day now the 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 come on sorry i'm just finding the words uh the uh, cnr ratio it's 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 not that good as in case of mdcts maybe i can uh, make an addition or contribution mm. for these questions so recently, indeed, about these dual source CBCTs, like a couple of uh, publications are coming out. 
especially the machines that was produced in China and in Korea. You know, in one of these publications, uh, I guess uh, two years ago, uh, there was a new machine established in Korea and uh, they were mentioning about a stable uh, mean gray volume. Mm -hmm. uh, that can replace the host cell unit. Of course, that was just only one publication so far, as far as I know. And last month, uh, uh, from the same team, uh, another publication came out uh, in terms of the implant placement, especially to evaluate the bone quality. For the uh, soft tissue, uh, not just in terms of the hard layer, but nowadays, uh, people are working working about the artificial intelligence, especially the gun networks. So pretty much now we have the capability to change the CBCT image to a regular medical CT image using gun networks. So pretty much the information that we have taken from the CBCT is already there. Uh, the soft tissue information is already there as well. So uh, with the artificial intelligence, especially with the gun network, we can uh, try to extract this information out of this uh, bone window, so to say bone window CBCT and convert it into soft tissue. And uh, I might say that uh, like, there are a couple of publications came out and I saw like images it's more or less the same uh, images that we have taken with the medical CT. So right now we have capability to get the soft tissue from CBCT image using GAN network. Yeah, I, 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 if I may uh, add that this is really uh, promising and, and how, how these two modalities try to uh, approach each other. I mean, like, and of course, uh, um, uh, emphasizing that how how big difference is between uh, the uh, patient dose between the uh, medical CT and the and the CBCT as well. So it's it sounds really promising. I mean, maybe not just in the future, but I mean, my opinion is within five years we are going to work with the soft tissue CBCTs. Definitely, and standard side units. Maybe, I mean, it's not gonna be Hosfeld unit, but it's gonna be like something unit, but uh, within five years, we are going to work with this. So uh, I guess there are no more questions. Uh, I would like to thank you again for your participation. And thank you we're so very much. happy to host you. And we are going to be very happy to host you in Izmir as well. In the meantime, uh, please uh, join us uh, in October from 19 to 23 October. And uh, we are going to have some kind of really fascinating program with the ultrasonography, TMG courses. Uh, you can find all the information in our webpage. Uh, feel free to uh, join us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'm closing the webinar. See you very soon. Thank you very much. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.